One of the uh, very special presentations that the White House Fellows make each year. And as chair of the Jack Valenti Award Committee, I'm very happy to have the task of presenting the award today. As you all know, the recipient of the award this year is Tom Brokaw. Uh, I want to thank Tom for coming. He is between flights, as I explained to you. He's gone to considerable uh, uh, length to arrange his schedule so that he could be with us. And I think it's just a demonstration of his uh, loyal friendship and support of this program that he's managed to come and be with us today. I should not, so that you won't worry about this, you don't have to take this award with you on your next flight. <laughs> um, the award we're presenting is a very special one. It's named for Jack Valenti, who for over 40 years, from the very beginning of the program, was the most devoted friend this program has ever had. The award recognizes those, like Jack, who were not themselves fellows, but who are exceptional supporters of the program. It seems fitting that we're honoring Tom Brokaw at a time when the Fellows Program is entering its 50th year. For Tom's remarkable career spans almost this same period of time. He began as a reporter in the mid-60s in Atlanta covering the Civil Rights Movement. Over these 50 years, Tom has had an extraordinary career as a chronicler of American history. Through his best-selling books, his many award-winning documentaries, and his coverage of national and world events as a reporter and as anchor of the NBC Nightly News. I'm turning my page because I want to make sure I say everything I intend to say. Uh, Tom has often been recognized and honored for his distinguished work as an author and broadcast journalist, as well as for his very extensive philanthropic work. Later this month, it was just announced that he will receive the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the nation's highest civilian award. By any measure, Tom Brokaw is one of the nation's most respected, trusted, and admired figures. Today we're honoring Tom for contributions that are largely unknown to the public, but they're very well known to this group of White House Fellows, and they're very much appreciated. Tom has been a good friend of the Fellow for decades. For years, he regularly made time in his busy schedule to meet in off-the-record sessions with classes of fellows, sessions that have been among the most memorable for many. When a reporter once asked a fellow from the class of 94-95 who stood out among the people the class had met, he replied, the president, the vice president, and Tom Brokaw. In 2009, Tom's commitment to the program grew significantly when he agreed <clears throat> to become a member of the Commission of White House Fellowships. John Phillips, then chair of the commission, told me that Tom added enormously to the deliberative process and to the collegiality of the commission. He was a favorite of both the commissioners and the candidates, which is something almost unheard of in the annals of the selection weekend. Tom took a personal interest in the fellows after their selection. He invited them to view NBC Meet the Press and afterwards meet with the program's hosts and guests. When fellows went to New York, he invited them to the NBC station and to sit in on the daily staff discussions of what stories to include in the evening's news. Tom's enthusiasm for the fellows was especially evident in the wonderful feature he produced and showed on the NBC News in, in June 2010 that acquainted millions of people across the country with this fabulous White House Fellows program. So I'd like you to turn to the back, if you would, while we play that feature. <clears throat> time now for our Making a Difference report. And tonight, at a time when polls, including our own, show that just a quarter of the American population trusts the government to do the right thing, there is a part of Washington politics very few outsiders ever see, the young people from both parties who come here to Washington to learn how things work and how government and they themselves can make a real difference. Tom Brokaw has our report. 
Founded in 1964, this prestigious program puts the best and brightest physicians, military officers, academics, business leaders, and others to work in the highest levels of government with direct access to the White House, cabinet secretaries, and world leaders. Many of its alumni have gone on to greater achievement. Colin Powell, historian Doris Kearns Goodwin, Senator Sam Brownback, Paul Gigo of the Wall Street Journal, to name just a few. This year's class of 14 is just winding up a one-year tour of duty. Hello, my name is Maret Mandefro. I'm a physician and an anthropologist. An expert on AIDS, a documentarian. She's been working for the Department of Veterans Affairs on health. How has it helped you, not just as a doctor, but as a citizen, understand your government? It's been a wonderful place to, to see public health in action. I've been blown away by the talent, by the dedication. The other thing I would tell people is learn about the military. As civilians, we have pretty much no connection to that reality, and we have two wars. A former reporter who covered those wars after he was a Rhodes Scholar, before he got a Yale Law degree. My name is John Finer. I was a reporter at the Washington Post. Now I'm working in the office of the White House Chief of Staff. He came to his position with a lot of skepticism. Now you're on the inside. What's the biggest difference? When you come inside, you, you recognize that a lot of these decisions that people are making aren't as easy as they maybe look. I don't think I would ever question anybody's intentions to the extent maybe I did uh, as a journalist. You really do start to feel like, like part of the team and everybody pulling together to try to accomplish objectives. Hi, I'm Rob Lyman. I'm an active duty Air Force Lieutenant Colonel. Now I'm at the Department of Transportation. Lieutenant Colonel Rob Lyman is a get it done kind of guy, used to following orders and asking few questions. A veteran of Iraq, on track to become an Air Force General. Is there a lot more dialogue about the wisdom of the decision and sometimes a little more pushback than you would see in the military? I think there's a lot of debate. Uh, but that's part of our system. That's part of the beauty of our system. As they wind up their insider tour through the corridors of power, these White House fellows have a new appreciation of the challenges and the possibilities of public life. So for all his, year, all his years of commitment to the program, for the many ways he enhanced the fellow's experience and helped strengthen and raise the visibility of the program, it's my great pleasure and honor to present Tom Brokaw with the 2014 Jack Valenti Friend of the White House Fellows Award. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, thank you all very much. I, I'm, I'm really very grateful. When people ask me, can't Washington get anything right, I always begin by talking about the White House Fellows Program because I'm a child of that time in the post-World War II era in which we believed that our generation was called to Washington, called to the idea of public service. And there is no better, in my judgment, emblematic symbol of that, and then in reality as well than the White House fellows. Tom Johnson is over here. We first met when he was in the first class. I was a young reporter in Atlanta, and these bright, bright young men came down who were White House fellows, and it was pretty clear to me at the end of a half an hour, I couldn't get into the program because they were all so accomplished. A lawyer from San Francisco, Tom had grown up in Georgia, and it was the beginning of really of, of a love affair that I've had with the White House fellows. I served as a commissioner. I did speak a number of times. I've been in and out of it on Republican and Democratic administrations because I always get more back from it, frankly, than I'm able to give. I'll tell you one kind of funny story. I was doing a day in the life of George Bush 43. And when we do those kinds of programs, as you might expect, the White House schedulers kind of load up the calendar for the president so that he looks like he's active all day long, and they try to put him with the right demographic group. Tim Russert and I were in the Roosevelt Room. The president came in to have a meeting with White House fellows. And he turned to the White House fellows and he said, Brokaw and Russert couldn't get into the White House fellows. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sorry, but I just couldn't resist it. I said, Mr. President, if you want to start comparing grade points, that's okay by me. <laughs> And he kind of gave me a thumbs up. <laughs> that story got back to one of my college classmates who turned to another friend of mine and said, Brokaw was bluffing when he said that. <laughs> and in fact, I was. 
it's also a great honor for me to accept this award in the name of my friend Jack Valenti, who was a great friend of Tom's as well. He was a wonderful patriot. He came here on Air Force One with Lyndon Johnson the day that John F. Kennedy was shot. He rushed to the airport, he was summoned on board. He was an enormous presence in this community for as long as he was here. He was just filled with uh, the greatest patriotic sense and spirit and it really did cross party lines. He had pals on both sides of the line. He represented, as you probably know, the American film industry. Wasn't very tall, but that was the physical piece of him. In terms of the impact that he had, he was a towering figure. And I was really very, very fond of him. So it's especially meaningful me, for me to be able to get this. And my final comment, some of you may know that I've been dealing with cancer for the last year. I'm not quite out of it. It looks like it's gonna be okay. It's been a tough year. And we kept it secret for a long time. And then when it finally emerged late in the spring, I started getting all these Lifetime Achievement Awards. <laughs> and I began to worry that my cancer doctors were sharing things with people awarding these <laughs> that I wasn't hearing from them. People were saying, we better give it to them in a hurry. I don't think it's gonna be around very much longer. That's not gonna be the case at all. As long as there is gonna be a United States and a Washington DC and a federal government, which is after all the glue that holds us all together, there will always be the White House fellows and we'll be better off for it. Thank you all very, very much.